What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to tonight's video market wrap. Man, it's been a very interesting day, to say the least. We're going to be going into Bitcoin's price action and where we can expect it to go to in the next few hours and also going into tomorrow. We're also going to be taking a look at how the financial markets are reacting to this vulnerability with banks across the board. We're also going to be having a look at why Blackstone has all of a sudden brought Ancestry.com. We're going to have a deep dive into that and what that could mean for us. But more importantly, we're going to be taking a look at the Credit Suisse situation and how that could be the start of many more banks coming up and looking at potentially foreclosures, maybe defaults, who knows. So if you are new to the channel, welcome to Traders Reality. My name is Tino. Let's have a conversation. Bitcoin on the one hour time frame is giving us a clue as to what could happen very shortly. Now, you can see Bitcoin is holding at that 50 EMA onto dear life. All of the gains that Bitcoin has made over the last couple of days are going to be based on this area right here. Why? Because if Bitcoin does break down from here, the next logical point would be at the 200 EMA on the one hour time frame. Now, how do we justify that? Well, there's two ways we can look at it. We can assume that Bitcoin's going to come down because this is where the next pool of liquidity resides. What do we mean by that? Quite simply, in here is where retail traders were buying. But at the same time, that's where the market maker was building his shorts because you can't buy if no one sells. So we assume that if Bitcoin breaks down the 50 EMA, this would be the next zone that Bitcoin goes to to establish support. And it's coming back towards a key area, which is the 200 EMA. Now, let's just go back to the live stream today. Now, please forgive me. My face doesn't look really appropriate in this snapshot, for the better word. But, you know, be my guest. You've got memes with the face of what someone looks like when they are. Chuck it into the Discord. And if you haven't done so, get over to the Pattern Watchers Discord. Everything you need is on the website, tradersreality.com. All right. Now, during the New York live stream today, we were talking about Bitcoin coming back into this blue vector candle. What was the logic as to why it was more than likely going to achieve that? Well, we could see that Bitcoin was holding above the daily open. Now, this is on the one minute time frame. Now, as a day trader, I have to pay attention to the smaller time frames to see how the moves develop. And the hybrid system sort of gives me clues as to what the market is trying to set up. Remember, this game is about traps, okay? Now, we can see these big pushes up, yet not going anywhere. You see, the second push right there doesn't go anywhere. Now, if we go back into the chart itself, you can see on the one minute time frame, Bitcoin did give us another push up. So if we go over here, there it is right there. So that's the same blue vector candle that we marked off earlier on. Now, they made their way down. They moved back up. So there was your first push right here. There was your second push. And there was the third push. And then they moved down into that liquidity zone. Once they hit a zone like this, where there is a vector candle, about 80% of the time, they're going to look to try and recover back up to do the same thing and work towards the next zone. Now, you can see that Bitcoin has actually broken down aggressively and took our targets. And now it's retraced back up and it's stabilizing. But what's got my attention is what's going on in terms of the exchange inflows that would suggest that if Bitcoin is going to go lower, how can we back it up by the behavior of retail traders in Bitcoin? So look, we're expecting Bitcoin to come down. We go over to this chart and you can see the inflows are showing an increase right now. The last reading was at 1.74. All right, so 1,704. Bitcoin has hit exchanges, inflows. What do we mean by inflows? So if you just go over here, what does inflow mean in Bitcoin? It simply means an amount of coin deposited into exchange wallets. That would be seen as bearish. Why? Because it means people depositing into exchanges, it means they're looking for liquidity to sell. The flip side to that is outflows. So if people are removing liquidity from exchanges, there's only one place that they can be putting it, and that's hard wallets. And that is what creates a demand for Bitcoin, and then prices move up. 
So we know what the story is with Bitcoin right now. And we can assume that if Bitcoin is going to show promise, it would bounce away from this zone and move up and take out the previous high, which sits at 26,417. Now, the high block would give us a different story. You can see that there are a lot of shorts that have opened up today. And the nearest zone is at 24,550. So if they're going to break that liquidity at 24,550 and they're going to potentially attack $619 million worth of short liquidations, then we're naturally going to be assuming that they could actually go for the 25 zone. So we go back into the chart. The chart price point was 24,575. We go into the chart, 24,575. That will take us towards this region right here. So we mark that off in a chart. So we then assume that if Bitcoin's going to go for that area, it's at that point right here where Bitcoin could initiate a safe, uh, well, a break higher retrace continuation up. It would have to find support inside of this area to prove it can go higher. But be careful. Mr. Market Maker likes to do this tricky play with wicks right here. And we've got some right here. And of course, today's price action. So if I get rid of all of that, look at this area here. Stopping volume candles. Well, what are they? Those are points in the chart where the market moves up aggressively, but comes straight back down so that it can't allow retail to realize a profit and attack the retail traders that went long in that single candle and they did it twice. And that is what led price to break down. Now we know the technicals of Bitcoin right now. Even if you go into higher timeframes, you can see on the daily that Bitcoin right now is trading further into yesterday's gains, okay? And that's not a good sign. They've recovered some of the wick and now they're trading inside of yesterday's play. Now, that's a little bit of a problem because we've got this area here, big green vector on the daily, which could suggest that tonight Bitcoin could actually come back down if it can't hold the key 50 EMA on the one hour time frame. The common theme right now is bank volatility is creating a lot of instability in the marketplace. We do have the hope that the Fed is going to pause on the interest rate increases coming in towards the end of this month. That's why we're seeing the market behaving a little bit erratically. We get comments from good old Larry suggesting, and Larry is the CEO of BlackRock. And he's suggesting that it's too early to assume that a collapse is coming, but there may be more closures coming in. There may be more banks that might actually go under. And he summarized it clearly in this little comment right here. He said, it's a classic asset liability mismatch. Okay, that's why these banks are all going under. It means that a bank does not have enough readily available assets to sell to match the value of deposits. Now, that brings me over to the FDIC. Well, who is the FDIC? The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation is an independent government agency. And what they do instead, they provide insurance for customers' deposits. Now, let me draw your attention to something. In 2021, the statistics are showing, and this is a report right in front of you, their fund balance is 125.5 billion. But they've insured deposits of nearly 9.9 .9 trillion. So let's just go back to Larry's comment. Classic asset liability mismatch. We go over to this sheet and it shows us that fund balance is 125 billion and Insured deposits are 9.9 .9 trillion. So hold on a second. If this goes, what does that mean? Let that sink in your mind. Blackstone just recently acquired Ancestry.com for $4.7 billion. Why on earth is Blackstone buying Ancestry.com? Well, Blackstone is separate to BlackRock, but it's pretty much got the same guys running the show. Okay. Now, the motivation for it is they see a gap in the marketplace suggesting that family tree tracing as well as personalized medicine seems to be something of the future. So how do we make money from that? Well, let's just go and have a look at some of the biggest players in the medical sector. Pfizer right there, we know it's the top heavy player. Market cap of $226 billion. Now we know BlackRock holds a significant amount of shares in this company. All you need to do now is have a look at companies within this sector that might actually do well if Blackstone 
applies a certain strategy once they've acquired fully Ancestry.com. Quite simply put, they've now got data to millions of people, okay? Personalized medicine. Okay, whatever you want to see it as, take what you can from it. Call me a conspiracy theorist. Mm, maybe, maybe not. But why is it such a big bet? Something's brewing. So that only leads me over to companies inside the medical sector. Now, just check this out. Protagonist Therapeutics shooting up. Look at this bad boy right here. Big accumulation right there. Someone's brought this bad boy. Are these the guys that are going to be involved in this whole story of Blackstone picking up Ancestry.com? Because think about it. They've just picked up a ton load of data on people. What about Novo? What do these guys do? Medical ethical drugs going up. Let's have a look at another company. Merck develops prescri um, prescription drugs in areas of diabetes, obesity, respiratory, cardiovascular in women's health. So you've got <laughs> Ancestry.com, which is filled with millions of women that may disclose this information and they can work out maybe personalized medicines from that information. Well, you don't think this company is going to take their cue on that? Look at the share price, $107 moving up. The market looks like it's going to collapse, bruv, and these bad boys are doing well. It's all about inside information or just simply putting two and two together. Final company, Tacadem Farm, going up. Have a look at what these guys do. Treat GI diseases, cancer, neurological, psychiatric diseases, hypertension, and vaccines. Hmm. Wait a second. Personalized medicine. Genetic health risks with tests sent to their home. I'll let that one play on your minds. The Credit Swiss story. The Credit Swiss story. They believe that it's going to default on its debt. And that's a big problem. Another bank, which is consistent with Larry's notion that it's going to lead to a domino effect. Now, there's two ways you can see this. These banks, if they do default, someone's going to step in to save them. That means the share price is naturally going to come tumbling down. If we actually go over to the share price of Credit Suisse right now, you can see that it's taken <laughs> $2.16. You know, back in the day, when was this bad boy priced at? This was like nearly $60 a share at its heyday. But you can see it's taken an absolute nosedive. Funds only own 1% of it. It looks like it's pretty much going to the bin if it doesn't get saved. But if it does get saved, you can bank on the fact that this bad boy is going to shoot back up if they do get saved. Which leads me over to something else. Do you remember Charles Schwab? Charles Schwab itself didn't really get a good... It dropped 25% and that was really bad. All of a sudden, this bad boy has shot back up. Let's have a look at who's been buying this bad boy. The latest purchases of stock on this Open Insider website has shown that someone has purchased 81,000 shares at $58 a share. Okay? Value of $4.7 million buying up Charles Schwab. So it's either a bank run in the sense that they're just trying to get it on the cheap but they brought it inside of here. So that's a good sign, isn't it? But if the general marketplace itself is looking like it's going to roll over, then we have ourselves a bit of a problem. He might be in a bit of a drawdown, but if you're buying four and a half million dollars worth of shares of a company, then clearly cash flow ain't an issue and you can absorb a loss. Which leads me to something else. Have any of you heard of the March, the Ides of March from a good old Shakespearean play? You know, Julius Caesar was stabbed by his brother in the back. Now, they associate the Ides of March, and the Ides means the middle, okay? What day are we on? We're on the 15th of March, okay? And we can usually associate this with negativity. However, it's usually a time where you settle your debts. Julius Caesar, his brother stabbed him, settled any indifferences, got rid of him, done. Settle your debts, Credit Suisse. The government, bailout, settle your debts, 
you're getting the idea now, okay? I just thought I'd put that there for you guys to have a little ponder on the, the Ides of March, okay? So if you've made it this far, mad love and respect for watching the video. Now, if you want to learn more about the hybrid system, head over to tradersreality.com and you'll have the four steps that will show you how to get involved in downloading the indicator. It's free of charge. And if you want to receive daily updates on projections regarding the hybrid system, one similar to today in the New York live stream, check out the Patreon where you'll get access to a little bit more information on the hybrid system. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be seeing you tomorrow for the New York Open. Mad love. Peace.